Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art, located in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is May 31st, 2019, and uh, we're heading into summer. It's a beautiful day here. Uh, finally, we've had a week of rain, 40-degree weather, awful. And uh, it's up into the 70s and sunny today. It's supposed to be a great weekend, so yay. All right, our yard can dry out. <laughs> All right, um, and uh, we're going to get into uh, the weekly eBay auction results here in a second and talk about uh, some things that closed up on Catawiki and some things that are coming up. And uh, there wasn't a lot of stuff that closed this week because there were two, as you know, uh, fairly big sellers that have two large auctions on there. And we decided to feature a lot of them because some of them are so good and uh, uh, with their things. And you can find them here on the uh, newsletter page. And also we've added quite a few things this week, as you know, to the daily updated uh, eBay Today page. Um, I think there's 150 things on there right now for some reason. It really got filled up. All right. And uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was after we did the Ching period, uh, the Ching Famille Rose uh, uh, video last week, um, I mentioned that we'd be uploading all of the images in the video onto the site in a blog uh, so folks can get to them. You can look at them and take your time and uh, uh, enlarge the images and so forth. And here they are. We did it this week. I think it was up about 70 images. We tagged them all, titled them all, um, got them squared away. And uh, so please take advantage, use it. Uh, the uh, pictures look pretty good. They, I think they look very good, actually. And they're exactly the video pictures that we used. So uh, it, it'll make sense. So you can go back and forth, look at the videos, and, uh, and get some uh, information out of it. Uh, we go back to stuff we put on here all the time. It's handy. It's quicker than going searching the web for it sometimes. All right. And uh, now let's take a look and see how things went on eBay this week. This was something that did very well. Uh, you may remember we had this sort of interesting framed uh, plaque with these, uh, had six sort of vignettes, these landscape scenes with calligraphy on them. Um, I'm not sure what they were describing. We didn't bother to look them up, but I thought it was a nicely done plaque, very good quality. Um, the only problem was the photographer, or the guy that took the pictures, used a flash. He washed out his own pictures in a few camp cases here. Uh, you got to use, use side lights more often. But uh, this was a nice plaque. It was beautifully done. It was a good find for the seller. Uh, I think this was a nice-looking example, um, 19th century clearly. And it ended up selling for $5,414, uh, which, which is a pretty good price for that. But it was a very unusual plaque. Uh, you don't see those very often. All right, and then there's a very good Quan John ware uh, Quan Chiang wear, uh, vase. This was a large one. It was 22 uh, or 3 inches tall, uh, but very good decoration, very good quality decoration. And if you bother to take a quick look, uh, you can see how well these figures are painted, uh, the, the brush strokes, especially how they outline the robes, the nice shading of the uh, skin color around the faces and so forth. Very expressive, nicely done. Uh, here's a, 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 a large scene, and you'll notice there's sort of a, a wide sort of orange peel texture to it. Uh, I've noticed lately on some of the fakes they're making, when they fake orange peel, they make it way too bumpy. looks silly. All right, and here's the bottom of it, that typical uh, late 19th, early 20th century platform foot when they did these uh, multi-sided vases. Recessed, no glaze. Sometimes they're glazed, sometimes they're not. Uh, Josh has some vases up right now that are late 19th century that have glazed vases, and we're going to take a look at those in a little bit, uh, but uh, just for comparison. And um, here's, here's another shot of the vase, and he pointed out that there's a little repair here, and if you looked, you certainly can see it. But it still did fine. It brought $2,025, which is not a bad price for that uh, nice-looking nice looking vase. I like the uh, applied peaches on the neck as well, the relief work. It's always nice when they do that. All right, now over here to the robe. Good-looking robe. Not an extremely old one, first quarter of the 20th century, but nicely done. Good quality needlework. Uh, very simple, uh, uh, but, but nice color selection. Nice wave border at the bottom. Nice rondelles. Had a couple of minor little splits in it here and there, but overall, very nice-looking robe. Um, and uh, it did fine. It brought $587. But it's just, you know, it's sort of proof that you don't have to spend four or 5000 bucks to get a good robe or 10000 or even more. Um, as you know, some of these yellow imperial robes, they bring a half a million. But, but this is a good, um, you know, informal robe from the early 20th century. So perfectly fine. And then over here to the plate. This is sort of that mysterious uh, 18th century style plate with, with two flags on it. One is the American 13 colonies flag. And the other one 
is the uh, Republic period flag of China, which, which was used up until about 1928 and came into use in the early part of the uh, 20th century. Um, I'm not sure what this was about, to be honest with you, but I thought it was really interesting. And uh, I don't think the plate was an 18th century plate. I think it was done later. Uh, but at any rate, it sold for $1,410. And if anybody knows about the histories of these plates, I couldn't find anything on it. I don't know what the, what the point was. Or was it a blank that they worked with? Or I don't know. It was just an interesting thing, one of those things that comes along once in a while, and you say, wow, that's great. All right. And on here, here's another robe. This one did a bit better than the other one because it's a dragon robe, obviously. It's a 19th century dragon robe, late 19th century. But good quality, nice-looking dragons on it. Had a, a bit of sign of wear here on the inside, on the liner, which is typically how they look, sort of a light blue, a little bit worn. And it did fine, but it didn't bring the world. It brought $3,799. And uh, many of you have watched a number of these videos. We've seen these before. Sometimes they bring five, six, seven thousand. So I think this was sort of in the low middle end of the price range for these. But it was a perfectly good price and a uh, very nice robe. Didn't cost the world. Okay. And uh, this was another piece. That same seller had this. He, had a, he was a seller in Long Island. And uh, he had a number of interesting silks this week. And this is that, uh, that silk ground on vel sort of voided velvet uh, finish with a dragon squared in the center within a frame. This looked like an 18th century uh, silk to me, uh, by judging by the work and the decoration. Nice looking border on it. I'm not sure what it was off of. You never know unless you actually see it. Somebody had added uh, some over wrap, wrapping on the end to keep it together, which was a good idea. And it ended up selling for $1,077, um, um, which I think was very reasonable. I mean, you certainly see rank badges bring that, and I think this was better than a lot of the rank badges I've seen. And uh, on to this, the bowl, uh, the, the bogu jar, they called it. Uh, it was about 8 inches in diameter, nice size, covered with precious objects. This was an 18th century uh, uh, example. Uh, if, you want, if you hadn't taken the time, you flip it over and look at the foot rim on it, that bottom that uh, you know, tilted inward foot, rounded, uh, nice surface, nice and white, good quality. Uh, here are the precious objects, very nicely painted all the way around, cash symbols and vases and incense burners and all that business. And uh, it did fine. It brought $730. But it was an interesting thing. I, and I, I always like looking at things that don't have borders on them, uh, borderless pieces. Often you think of Kangxi pieces because they were often done this way. But this wasn't Kangxi. It was done later. But nice quality and an interesting object. Okay, and then on to the Cloisonne teapot. Uh, this was our friend Steve up in, in New Hampshire had this. Uh, it's an interesting little pot with a sort of a, a, a loop handle uh, it, uh, framing it and this sort of compressed form and this very cool spout, this, this sort of uh, beast spout in, with, with uh, uh, gilt metal on it. Uh, nice thing. And uh, it went, I think, I think it went fine. It brought $676. It was an early 19th century example, but good quality. And uh, if you collect teapots, this is, I'm sure, an interesting thing to you. All right. And then on to this, the lacquer screen, late 18th, probably early 19th century lacquer, but a good example, nicely cast on a later stand. And this was not a small one, as you can tell by the Coke can in the corner. Uh, a lot of these table screens in lacquer tend to be, you know, five by seven inches, six or eight inches. This was 13 by 11, I think. Nice big one. And the stand was later, this style of stand was very popular in the early 20th century, and they were applied to all kinds of things that needed stands, including jades. And um, here they applied it to this good looking piece of uh, lacquerware, nicely finished. And it did fine, it brought $1,680. But I think for the lacquer collector, that was pretty good. One of the things to watch out for, though, in lacquer, there are a lot of resin copies floating around, and they are of amazing quality. And the Chinese have been making amazing copies of lacquer from resin for 60 years, 50 years. All right, so um, you want to be careful. You really want to look at it. Uh, back in the 50s and 60s, uh, the Palace Museum in Taiwan was making copies of some of their best pieces, including, you know, Chin Lung lacquer screens table screens. Uh, there was one in particular that I saw. It was in a house in New Hampshire. And the family knew that it was a copy. They knew that. But they wanted me to see it anyway when I was there for something else. And uh, I was amazed at how good this thing was. From three feet, two feet away, you cannot tell it was made of resin. Um, uh, it was that good. 
uh, every detail, undercut, they, they, because they hand worked them. I don't know how they did them, but just amazing quality. And, um, and they, a few of them have turned up since and other pieces from that collection. But this was a real one, and I only mentioned that as an aside. I didn't mean to go off track. Uh, but at any rate, uh, but the, some of the things they turned out that, for that palace stuff was amazing. Really something. And then on to this, that who form vase. As I said last week, these have been around. These turn up periodically. We've had them. And they always seem to bring six, seven hundred to maybe a thousand, nine hundred, you know, a thousand dollars or nine hundred dollars, something like that. And uh, this one did very well. I was kind of happy to see this. It ended up selling for $2,565, which seemed like a very strong price for one of these. These are never imperial. They're sort of a, a curious provincial ware that was made from um, Guangxu period who form vases. Uh, they're, you know, they're not marked or anything. They're, the bottoms of them are usually unglazed. And uh, this one did really well. So uh, let's keep an eye on those in the future and see if there, there's sort of a trend. There's another one sort of similar to this on eBay right now. So we'll see how that does. I think it ends in the next few days, I'll, but it'll be on the newsletter. We'll check it out. And then on to this, the silk. Uh, this was a very pretty Chinese silk, late 19th, early 20th century. But the quality of the silk work on this was quite excellent. Uh, and good, good gold silk ground, um, interesting with the cockerels and the uh, peacock uh, and the, the pheasant up in the tree. Uh, nice decoration. Here's another bird um, with uh, prunus blossoms and all that business. And it did well. It brought $1,625. This came out of a, uh, a dealer in Lyon, France. Uh, but uh, quite good, quite good. And uh, on to this. This was that uh, Kangxi style vase that we, we pointed out when it went up. It was a good size vase. This was about uh, 18, as I recall, inches tall. Nice big vase. The seller, uh, erring on the side of caution, put it up as 19th century. I think it was an 18th century vase myself, judging by the quality of the decoration, the foot rim, and all that business. And uh, the decoration on this was really nice. Uh, where's the foot? We'll go back to the foot and take another look. Inside, there's the foot rim. Uh, that looks like an 18th century foot rim to me, the way it's shaped and the oxide line and so forth. Um, but beautifully done. If it's, if it's 19th, it's very early 19th century, but I think it's an 18th century one. And it brought $2,913. I don't think it was Kangxi, but uh, I certainly think it was 18th century. Nice thing. And uh, now on to some things that are closing in the next few days, and in particular, uh, Qing period and uh, Juice 1499 Chamberlain Antiques. They both have some very nice things up and, and, and very uh, varying, very different types of things up, which makes it kind of fun. Um, this is something that uh, uh, Josh has up right now. It's this very nice Meiji period Japanese lidded box. Beautiful gold work on it. Uh, here it is. It's up to 300. It's Komai mixed metal box. It's up to uh, $324. So it's got a gilt plaque on it and everything. A nice example, though. If you collect Japanese metalwork, you want to check that out. All right. And then over here, he has up this big pair of um, uh, uh, Famille Rose Mandarin uh, scene vases. And I love the statues they mounted on them. They did these sometimes in the late 19th century. And this one has uh, the, 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 the Kuan Yin sort of figures on these outcropped handles made of lotuses and the figures seated on top. But the decoration on these is really quite good. Um, here it is. The enamels are nice and strong. Sometimes late 19th century enamels don't have the, 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 the sort of intense uh, uh, tone that these do. Uh, these were nice. And uh, as I mentioned before on that John Guire piece, uh, here's the bottom of this one. Again, very similar, uh, this platform uh, foot recessed, uh, and this one they glazed it. That's really the only difference. Uh, this was a form of ace that they made in the late 19th, early 20th century. And as you can see, they did them in a variety of painting styles. But these were, this, was a, this is a nice pair of vases. They're up to $1,640, and I suspect they're going to more than double that by the end anyway. They'll, they'll get a good jump. These are nice big vases, highly decorative. They look great on a mantle, I think. And uh, over here, this is something else Josh has. I think this is just plain, flat-out pretty and beautifully potty, potted. A nice spherical shape to it with that sleek, uh, compressed uh, uh, rim uh, on the mouth with a slightly different color uh, tone of cobalt. Uh, it's an unmarked vase on the bottom, but clearly has an 18th century foot rim. 
uh, nice compact dense clay, um, uh, relatively free of impurities, nice thick glaze coming down, stopping very neatly above the foot. All the little characteristics you want to see on a nice monochrome. Uh, here's the mouth again, the nice, but really lovely, nice thick glaze. God, this is pretty. It's up to $2,000, and I think it's got a way to go yet. It ends on Monday, but uh, worth checking out, that's for sure. And this is something else he has up, and I have never seen one of these before. Every once in a while you see something you've never seen before. I've never seen this before. A texture-printed um, piece of Satsuma. Uh, this is not actual fabric. This is actually in the, in the, in the, pour, in the pottery. And it's got this amazing textured uh, relief work uh, done to it. Here's a picture of the back. It's got a mark on it. I did not look it up yet. I'm going to. And uh, this uh, uh, braided uh, reticulated rim. I think this is just such an interesting piece. It's very late Meiji probably, uh, or maybe a little after. I'm not sure. But what an interesting plate. And it's only up to uh, $117. It's got three days to go. If you're a Japanese pottery collector, I would urge you to check this out. This is a really nice thing. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just charming. And I, if you can't find another one, don't worry about it. Buy it anyway, because you're not. It's, it's a rarity. I think. I think. I think it's very highly unusual. If anybody has seen others, let me know. And uh, then they have this. This is a uh, Qing period. Has this? This nice compressed form, early 18th century uh, gugglet, um, with the double ring neck. Uh, for closure and uh, but beautiful quality that's that's up right now and it's only up to two hundred and thirty dollars I suspect it'll jump pretty well toward the end but it's a nice thing very nice thing and then this the swirl rim Tangshi uh, charger plate very attractive that's also on Qing period good example and uh, then this this is one of my favorites this is one of these immortal plates on the rim with the double Mandarin ducks in the center but vibrant colors, vibrant painting, beautiful enamels, especially the yellows and the reds on this really dry your eye. And I thought this was just wonderful. It's up to about $550 or so, uh, or 630 excuse me, a little more. Uh, it's got a ways to go yet, but that's a, um, that's a nice looking plate, very attractive plate. And then over here, this is something Qing period has also up right now, is this very nice Langyao Meiping base. Um, without looking at the foot, most people seeing this would say it was probably an early 18th century, possibly Kung Shi example, or, or, or you know, Chin Long, early Chin Long or something. It's not. This is a late, late 18th century piece, I think, or early 19th. But fabulous quality. The quality of this is just excellent. It's about eight inches tall, but the glaze on it is just elegant. And uh, it finishes up beautifully at the foot rim, nice and neat the way you want to see it. And uh, this closes in a couple of days. It's only up to $123. Right now, it's, it's at a bargain basement price. Go leave a bid on it. God, that's a great thing. Nice color. All right. And uh, let's see here. Get that one. And then over here, this is something a, a seller in the UK has. Very nice. Kung Shi uh, uh, molded uh, uh, plate. Beautiful colors. It's only up to 3 or $4. It closes in a couple of days. You want to check that out. And then over on Catawiki, um, there's a couple of things. Uh, they always have a lot of 18th century material. I've said that before. I keep saying it. There's a lot of 18th century material in the Netherlands in that area and finding its way onto Catawiki. And this is a nice-looking cafe au lait bowl with a cafe au lait saucer with it. Uh, very nice quality uh, enamels on the upper piece with the grasshoppers and that, that nice green. And then this very deep, very intense uh, Kung Shi blue. Uh, beautifully done. There's the bowl. All right, there's that. So you want to check that out over on Catawiki this week. And this, the double teapots. Pair of uh, melon formed or gourd, you know, compressed gourd form, melon form, um, Kangxi uh, Amari uh, teapots. These are beautiful. And I love they have little metal mounts so that you keep the lid, lid with it. Um, and it's unusual to see these. Usually the, the pairs of these things never survive. Um, and you're only going to find pairs of these typically in Europe anyway. I don't know why they didn't they didn't come here at that time. There was no Chinese export porcelain coming to the U.S. in the in the Kangxi period. Uh, but these are beautiful, and um, they're up to $1,043. They close on Sunday, so you want to check those out. And then last is this another Kangxi. There's other Kangxi stuff there. I'm just going through a few of them. Um, it's this nice Kangxi dish. 
Uh, beautiful center palette, uh, panel on it, nice, big, robust flowers. Very attractive. Uh, it closes, um, uh, d -d 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 when does this close? Closes on Sunday also. One day, one hour, and 35 minutes from Friday, whenever that is. All right. So if you haven't gotten a Catawaki account yet, please do go over and get one uh, because they're getting more and more things. And um, it's all it, they've got some nice stuff. Okay. And uh, that's about it for the week. I'll include a link on this video uh, to get you over to the, uh, the, the Famil Rose Enamel blog we did. So you can go check that out. And um, have a fabulous week. Sign up if you haven't done so. Leave a comment. Lots of people are leaving comments lately. It's kind of fun. And uh, give us a thumbs up. It's good for our ranking on YouTube. And uh, we'll see you all next time. If you haven't gotten the newsletter yet, do sign up for it. Okay. Have a great weekend, and uh, I hope you find out find something out there this week that you love. Bring it home. And uh, enjoy the spring weather. It is upon us. All righty. Bye-bye.